Yama Shabakani. Oh Allah, Allah, Lama Tarakan in Arabic. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? So if God Almighty and Jesus Christ have made a compact, an agreement that he will come and die for the sin of mankind, why is he chicken out at the end? Why he should have died willingly for mankind? He should have died willingly without any complaint if that is the case. But here's the case that Christ doesn't want to die. So the prayer that he did in the Garden of Gethsemane is actually showing, you know, you know, the fear of death that Jesus Christ had. And so he prayed to God Almighty. And so we can see him also in the book of uh, Matthew 7, 7. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. What kind of father is it? When you ask him for a bread, he give you a stone. Or you ask him for a fish, he give you a snake. My father in heaven, give good things to those who ask of him. So ask my father. Here is Christ asking the father that he doesn't want to die. And God Almighty actually saved him from that enormous death on the cross. Where do we find that? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, he offered up prayers and crying and tears to the only one God who can save him from the death, and he was heard. I didn't say that. The, Hebrew, the book of Hebrews said that. At the time that Jesus Christ walked flesh and bones on earth, he offered up prayers and supplication and tears from the only one God who can save him from the death, and he was heard. Heard from what? Why would the angels come down and support him? Look, the guy doesn't want to die. I'm sorry, the word. The, the word. He doesn't want to die, and he did not die. And so the book of uh, Psalm, the next one, verse 3, also is an indication that God Almighty will save Jesus Christ at the very end. Again, the book of uh, 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 Psalm, chapter 91, verse 4, God Almighty will cover him with his protection. So we have all this indication that Christ is not going to die, and Christ did not die on the cross. Uh, truly the Quran said, Wama kataluhu, wama salabuhu. They did not kill him, and they did not crucify him, but it appeared to them so. Now, this is vague. He didn't actually say uh, somebody was on the cross, but it appeared to them so. So the Muslim interpreters, also some of the interpreters believe that someone was hung on the cross. Me, personally, I believe someone was hung on the Calvary cross in Golgotha. I believe that. But that was not Christ. That was not Christ. Because in most cases, people, you know, spend a lot of time on the cross before they die. But in the case of Jesus, it happens so fast. And, you know, uh, according One minute, to Shay. evidence, yes, the evidence, there's a lot of indication that he did not die. So this is my, uh, my contention that Christ did not die on the cross. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. So I, I believe we have a lot of material to consider here. That's very good. Um, let me remind the viewers that you may make a $5 donation to ABN's ministry um, by texting the, word new, the words New Hope to 20222. ABN is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry entirely funded through donations. Your support will help us to uh, present more events like this week's uh, Jesus or Muhammad Apologetics Marathon. So um, every night this week, we will be having apologists and former Muslims and debaters live from 8.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned to ABN or watch us live stream at abnsat.com. All right, so we are going on to the next portion, which is the rebuttal section of the debate. And I'm excited to hear what both of you have to say. So. We will go to um, our 10-minute first rebuttals. Um, Tony, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Please begin. <clears throat> Thank you again. Thank you for your introductory remarks, uh, Sheikh Wall. In my rebuttal period, I want you to notice that Sheikh Wall did not address any of the points that I brought up. If you will notice that in my opening statement, I cited a number of, of statements made by Jesus of Nazareth concerning his death, concerning the place of his death, concerning the methodology uh, of his death by crucifixion, uh, his entombment, and his resurrection. If you notice, he dropped the point on Mark 10, 32 to 34. He did not address Mark 10, 45, where Jesus said that he would give his life as a ransom for many. He did not address the um, creed found in Paul's letters that they are dated to the earliest sources within months of the beginning of the early Christian movement. In fact, Sheikh Wall didn't even address any of the main points I brought forward in my introductory remarks. He didn't talk about the honorable burial of Jesus. He didn't talk about the discovery of the empty tomb. He didn't talk about the post-mortem appearances of Jesus. He didn't talk about the fact that it is universally held that these are the origin of the Christian movement. He didn't address the fact that the majority of scholarship all agrees that these points are considered historical facts about 
Jesus of Nazareth. And so I don't think he really touched on the subject. He rather uh, went and uh, selected various passages from the New Testament and the Old Testament. I don't think he showed any regard for the context. He simply took them and uh, read them and tried to show that these texts were in fact proving that Jesus of Nazareth uh, did not die. And I don't think he's proven that tonight's debate. You will notice he referred to Surah 4, Ayah 157, and he admitted that it is a bit ambiguous. Uh, a matter of fact, it is very ambiguous. There are some scholars who think, some Muslim scholars, uh, who think that this uh, may refer to the fact that Jesus was in fact crucified, but he did not die on the cross. This is the view held, for instance, by Shabir Ali, who holds that Jesus was crucified, but that he swooned on the cross. And so here you notice there is a difference of opinion among Muslims. Um, you will uh, also notice the fact that uh, Sheikh Awal said that Allah would not allow Jesus to suffer such a heinous death, such a, a terrible death as crucifixion. But yet what is interesting is that the Quran says that, uh, that uh, Muslims are not supposed to make distinctions among the prophets, that they're supposed to respect all the prophets equally. And yet the Quran tells us uh, many times in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah 2, for instance, that in the past, Allah would send prophets and messengers to, to the people, and many of them they slayed, they, they slew them, they, they wrongfully abused them. And so the question is, if, if many of Allah's prophets were, were killed and abused by people in the past, uh, why does Jesus get away with it? What is so special about Jesus? Uh, if there is no distinction among the prophets, and they're all considered equal and respected equally, why is it that other prophets of Allah suffered and were ruthlessly murdered by their own people? You will also notice uh, as well that, again, Sheikh Awal made no reference to Mark 10.45, the understanding that Jesus believed that his death would be that of an atonement, that he would lay it down for others. He rather goes to Paul, and he argues that Paul made this up. Somehow this was Paul's idea, Paul's gospel. But what he doesn't understand is I mentioned in my introductory statement that Paul said that he received this and that he passed it on. This was in Paul's material. He received this presumably from the Jerusalem disciples, the early followers of Jesus, and that he was passing this on. And the fact that this creed comes before Paul just dismisses the idea that Sheikh Kowal said that this was Paul's idea. This isn't Paul's idea. This was taken from the early disciples, and Paul simply passed it on. He then made mention of the fact that Paul talks about my gospel as if somehow Paul's gospel was different. But if you read 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, whether it was I that preached or whether it was them, that is the other apostles, it's the same gospel. It's the same gospel that I preach. The reason why Paul refers to this gospel as my gospel is because it is the apostolic gospel. Paul was considered one of the apostles, even though he became a believer later when Jesus appeared to him. Sheikh Wall said that Galatians 3.13 says that Jesus Christ became a curse, but he misquoted the passage. The passage doesn't say Jesus Christ became a curse, but he became a curse for us. That is to say, he took our penalty, he took our punishment on the cross, and in effect, he bore the curse on our behalf. And Paul knows the law. Paul was a Jewish rabbi. He knows, he knows more about the law than, than I do and Sheikh Awal does put together. And Paul quotes from the law. He says, it is written, everyone who hangs on a tree is cursed by God. But that's precisely the point. The point is that Jesus became a curse for us, not for himself, but on our behalf, as our sacrifice. Sheikh Awal quoted Ezekiel 18 about the proverb that was going about the people of Israel who were saying that it's not fair that the children be punished for the sins of their fathers. But what Sheikh Awal is disregarding is the context of Ezekiel 18. This was a proverb that was circulating among the people who were in exile, and they were claiming that it wasn't fair. What's the point of, of repenting? I mean, God God didn't show favor to their ancestors. Why is he going to show it to us? We might as well live as we please. That's what the context is talking about. And, call, and God is urging his people in Ezekiel 18 to, no, don't think like that. You will be responsible for your own sins, and I want you to repent. I want you to live. I don't want you to die. That's the context that we see there. Now, notice he goes to Luke 24, and he says, well, Jesus appears to his disciples, and he says to them, uh, peace be with you. And then they think he's a ghost. Why did they think Jesus was a ghost? Well, obviously, they thought he was a ghost because they believe he died. And if a person appears after they die, presumably, you think it's a ghost. But the reason why they thought Jesus was a ghost was, number one, they truly believed that he had died. And number two, they weren't expecting the resurrection. Every Jew believed that the resurrection would take place at the end of the world, at the time of judgment, just like every Muslim believes that at the end of the world, Allah will resurrect the dead 